I feel like Ross was just going through the Sonar Gauntlet right? in this tournament. He's had to play, he has to play Duck Hunt, he had to play Belmont, he had to play T now, he had to play Almar. So Ross was just playing all the zoning characters. Yeah, it looks like they're going right into it. Game one on Pokemon Stadium 2. Catches that uh, dash attack with the board tail, but you no know, one gets caught by the Galaga, and you know all these board airs. It's just so hard for Peach to escape all these combos sometimes. Yeah, but you could say the same thing about DJ's combos. You know, if he's able to get that one conversion off of a turn up or a soft mirror right there, he can rack up a lot of damage as well. So if he's able to get in and break through Pac Man zone, we could see a very, very close match. I mean, look at the percent right now. It is an even game at this point. And, you know, oh, wow, all these turn up recoveries. Yep. Oh, that Peach Bomber, that had to have been a... No, maybe he was anticipating a jump? No. I mean, I feel like he, he was anticipating the high recovery. Yes, high he, recovery. Yeah. He was doing that a lot against Nitro, as we saw earlier. Oh my god, wow, catches grabs the, the bell. I mean, you know you're comfortable in the eye play when you see the bell coming at you and you don't choose to shield it, you don't choose to roll away from it, you choose to catch it in your hand. That is one of the first times I have seen someone so boldly just grab it out of Pac-Man's hand. Okay, I think Brazo, you know, if you hold that up special, the umbrella does like go all the way through. It doesn't snap the ledge, right? Right. I mean, that's like any up like any up if you like hold down on the, the control stick, like it'll go through legs. Yes, yes. Okay, four throws to T off stage. Does manage to make his way back, though. You know, T throwing out the hydrant, you know, he's just trying to find his way in, but, you know, barely avoids the hydrant, but he's in there instead, and, you know, now he's off stage, and this is where Raza oh, wants him. Yeah. All right. Oh, great air dodge out of that, only taking 18% as a result. But that miss tech is going to cost him a lot more. Oh, and that counter is going to get punished with a series of up airs. He tried countering it again right there, but it's going to come out a little bit too slow. Now T is making an offensive at this point. Oh, yeah. oh. oh he tried he tried side being it, but you know what? It's going to get beat out by the board smash, and then he gets hit by the fire hydrant too, just for added measure. All right, two down tilts, taking out fire hydrant. Are we going to see another turn up snipe? No, goes right through it. Board throw, keeping T off stage. Now we're seeing that high recovery come out. Bravo choosing to respect it. Yet again, throwing out the bell. Tries to throwing it again, but you know what? Not going to be able to find its mark. And you know what? Both players at super high percent. They just need to find one kill. And Bravo finds it first with a down air of all things. Down air off the top. You yeah. do not see that move kill often. That I mean, you, usually when you see down air hit, it's like below the leg. So yeah. you never really see a kill off the top because they never get hit anywhere near them, like, the top of the screen like that. Raza will take that hit, though, and looks like he might have a chance of taking the first game. Not if T has anything to say about it. Though. Oh my god, T went to the depths to just chase Raza down to the blast zone. And you know what? When you have a recovery like that, that you can go in super deep like that, use it and just pressure your opponent to submission. This could be anyone's match at this point. This is just so even. Stocks running back and forth. However, 50% out of nowhere from T. There you go. Quick Nair out of shield. And now I believe he's on deck. Gets it and finds it. And you know, he's just trying to find like the next item to throw in. You no know, bell on the mark. You know, looking for it. Finds it because he throws it. And you now Razo trying to avoid the first one but the air dodge lag makes it so that T can just catch it and go back again for the kill. That DI from Razo made me think just for a second that he might have lived that. Maybe if he was like 3% lower, right. he would have survived. But instead, T will take that game one. Very close though. Yeah. I mean, definitely it could have gone either player's way. Absolutely. Again, T going up game one over Razo. Here we are at game two. Honestly, I think Razo was playing very well. He just, you know, I think he has to go be a bit more aggressive, be more assertive when it comes to breaking T's in the zone. And that's a good start. I like how he's grabbing the items with the active, preventing him from starting up his, like, combos, his confirmed. 
And I love that, using the Hydrant as an active hurt box to, you know, use the code counter to, you know, catch T off guard there. And four there. Keeping T pressured on that platform. Another four there. And T looking to find his way in. And, you know, I, I, I like what he's doing. He's just kind of, like, sitting back, waiting for Razo to press the button and then trying to punish it as much as possible. Alright, Razo getting a little greedy there with that up smash. You can't blame him because that was how he took the first stock in game one. Another high recovery. Oh, oh he is yeah. going out there. I know you said I said you had to be a bit more aggressive on that, that might be a bit too risky. I mean, luckily he was able to drift that. He wasn't able to get punished like too hard. It wasn't like a smash attack, it was only a grab, but like still. And you know what? I love that, but you know what? For, dude, Pac-Man forward smash, like that that move needs to be nerfed. Like that is so many active frames on that move. Kind of reminds me of like, all of our sports matches, right? You know, those Pikmin can last for quite a while. I feel like the Pikmin only last a while if they hit something. Yeah, Otherwise, like, it's, it's a normal, like, sports match, like, like, like tip box, you know? But if they hit something, it's like, yeah, it lasts forever. But, so, if you have a forward smash that outlasts spot dodge, that's a little bit too active a forward smash, in my opinion. All right, more Galaga combos, 40% this time. A one, two, three jab. He's just throwing everything he has, nearly landing the forward smash. That would have been a 6 0 to that. And now he tries to find the jabs, but he gets buried instead. He manages to counteract with his own aerial. And you know what? Razo trying to find his way in, but gets knocked into the bell and gets knocked into the bell a second time, unfortunately, because he was in so much uh, active hit stun, like he wasn't able to get uh, stunned a second time. Yeah, and suddenly he's just sort of running away with this, you could say. Racking up so much percentage. Razo, Razo, got the apple. Yeah. What's he gonna do now? I mean, the apple is just like the quick, like, peek blue option, you know? Okay. No, it, it, trampoline will take him back to the ledge. Right. No unfortunate SDs in this set. You know, he read the aggressive approach, but no, T is gonna hold off a little bit and avoid that. And you know what? T is just almost like doing away with this lead at this point. And Brazo, on the other hand, a bit antsy, trying to land a forward air or just any aerial attack for that beach bomber. That forward air won't kill yet. Might have been stale from how many times he's throwing it out. Dare at the ledge. Oh, I love that. Using the air to catch the air dodge in the case. And you know what? He tried using the bell and he... I like what Pete's trying to do. He was trying to do what all, all pac men do, except you know, a little bit too slow, so I feel like if she went for the grab instead, she would have been a lot easier. All right, covering the roll from ledge with low cancel back air. Last dog, but he's up 88% now. Ooh, down air into the umbrella. I, I've never seen that. Oh. I mean, you know, it's, he is just trying to find his way in. You know, I don't like what he's doing. He's just sitting back and like kind of waiting for Brazo to like throw out a laggy option so he can punish it. And you know what? It's been working out great for him so far. Okay, blocking the ward. Oh, oh, that was. I, T was expecting the fire hydrant to push him just that little distance to land the fourth. That that's a big brain play right there. That is a true Pac-Man main play. You know, has the bell out once again. Oh, I love that. He, he read the roll or the the, the super like side to dodge in. And you know what? He tried punish again, but you know what? He was just didn't expect the side B. And Reading the air dodge and Razo clutches out game two. SoCal still has some life in him. Alright. That was a really good game two on Razo's part. But now it's, it's game three. Game three is the turning point of the match. Game three is always the most pivotal point, especially in these one one like, On top of like, unless you know, you're, you're playing game four and Paleo. Oh, that, that's very true. <laughs> is he going to Thunder Smash this weekend? No. No, no. okay. Three, two, so on to game three, all go. these Pokemon Stadium matches. No stage counterpicks here. Here we go, no, all 
I love that, using the fair and comboing off of that. Right yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen Pac-Man use forward tilt. And then like using that just to be like, okay, the combo ends here. Like I don't have anything true, but you're probably gonna land in this airspace. I'm gonna throw out the board throw in case like you, you do land right there. Well, and the um the trampoline, that that comes out like really quickly in terms of frames, right? Yep. And so I think that's how he was able to break out of Peach's combo there. It's definitely like a frame like four or five move. Like it, it's a really good like up the out shield. Ima imagine first, like Imagine uh, Game Watch up the out of shield, except without the invincibility of the game. And that's not going to be on field. Makes sense, makes sense. All right, he has the bell in his hand. Let's see when he throws it out. And then Razo just catches it once again. So brave of him. And you know what? Tries going for the higher recovery, gets punished, he gets thrown off stage again. And oh my god, the the hitbox on the up beef manages to go through the turnip, gets the punish, he's off stage. I know how is he gonna capitalize on this edge guard? No quick nair, and all he's looking for is the the B reverse uh key. He's looking for that and yet again he tried throwing it there, thought Rosal was gonna land, but unfortunately Rosal faked him out right there. Out throw. Oh, he read the jump. That was so smart from Razo. That was just the only way he could have gotten that kill. And, and he read it. He read the jump, and now he's up the stock. Oh, but that active frames on that grab. You know, you think it's safe, you think it's over, and it, it's like the Terminator. He'll be back. Oh, Razo going all the way out. Manages to snap to ledge. Oh, he stays on the ledge too long. And then suddenly, 60%! Ray counter to get him off. Alright. Alright, you know, sitting on the platform, you know, I love that. Waiting for him to throw out a move and be like, okay, you're gonna read the jump afterwards, so hit me with something and then I'll jump afterwards. And right, forward air from Razo. Yeah, he is being so much more aggressive on that leg than she is He wants to get him, get that stock up as soon as possible. Oh, I, I honestly thought for a second he was going to try and up throw. I mean, you know, T was like, okay, I got cheesed by that one move one time. I'm going to do everything in my power to not get hit by that move again. Like, hit me once. All right, shame, shame on me. Hit me twice. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Throwing the key out once again. He also just needs one stray aerial at this point to steal T stock, but instead T will steal it with the bell confirm into a forward smash. Here we go, you know, Razo just trying to throw out any of the aerials to find his way in, but T goes aggressive and gets hit by the forward tail, and you know it's not going to be enough to kill. Next aerial from Peach will kill without a doubt at this point. If he can even land one, though. Can he land one? I mean, He's you know, T's doing everything, everything he can to prevent him from doing so. He, had, he didn't take a single percent that stock. That was a zero to death. He no, just, no, he took the four tail. Oh, he took the four tail. He took the four tail, yeah. That still was just so dominant. And Razo, Razo's looking a little lost after that. He, he was looking so good in the beginning of that game three, but now everything might be falling apart for him. He's not able to keep, that, not keep himself in the game. I mean, Razo got hit with the classic, I'm going to fair you. And then the, the opponent was like, I'm going to just dash back a little bit, to make you with that, and forward smash you for it. Three, two, one, go! All right, here we go. Game four. He already setting up his hydrant at the Legends time. Maybe going to play a bit more defensively. Whoa, trying to do some Galaga combos of his own. Ooh, they're just battling off stage. Right. Here we go. Now, T having a little bit of a deficit, but you know what? That deficit means nothing if you have a kill confirm with the bell. And I feel like that's that's the main difference that this is coming up to is that Peach really. Oh my oh, god, no! Was, I can't tell if that was an accident or one of the biggest brain plays from Razo. I mean, Razo definitely planned that out. He definitely. Through the, the turn bound to kind of hit the, the uppy. And you know, unfortunately, it was just enough damage to get him so that if he touches it again, he dies. So right, taking a very early stock and, and the like, hydrant extending that combo as well. You know what? Razo just. It's gonna come down to can Razo really 
take this lead that he's been given and really run away with this game four. Looking like it so far. He is setting up his own once again, though. Hold oh, counters. Yeah, he's staying aggressive at the ledge. He read oh. that roll. Oh, that was no. so unfortunate. He fell out of it at the very end. You know, that, that was amazing DR from T Sport to avoid getting hit by that last hit. Because oh if God. that last hit hit, it might have just killed the amount of rage that he had. But forward tilt, not going to be enough to kill. And you know what? Oh, oh my God. I love that little stutter step with the up B to just avoid the, the melon right there. Yeah, he has to avoid everything T is throwing at. And he can't avoid the footsies. That dare coming out from T. Yeah, T was just like, I, I, I see you have a little tap dance. Uh, let me show you a little like, tap dance on my own. I've been taking lessons. <laughs> okay, almost landing that forward air. T once again, similar to game three, despite Razu having the initial lead, T, T just takes these combos and shows oh. no restraint. Right. And you know what? He had like a very, very large deficit at the beginning, but you know what? He's managed to bring things back. And Razo kind of panicking at this point, you know, trying to go for uh, very obvious things. Like he ran up and just shield right there. You know what? He's just been picking up on all these very linear approaches. And Whoa! Gets that and oh my god! That killed! That was so good! <coughs> I, I am so glad T is here in Southern California because that means we get to see him just expand his, his, just his gameplay live on stream. I mean, that is such good awareness of how your uh, projectiles interact. Just, he threw the projectile at one point, getting the grab, throwing it, knowing that the back throw would, would clank with the, the, the bell, and knowing that the bell would send it back the opposite way so that you can get the attack here afterwards. I mean, that was just such good knowledge on his part to be able to be like, okay, I can come off this and I will get to off this. Despite that outstanding play, though, this is an even match, and it just takes that bell. Oh my god, but you know, the, the lingering hitbox of the grab is going to be enough to snipe Peach a little bit. Gets the down tilt, gets the up air, not going to be quite enough, but you know what? Both players are just looking for that one little hit. No dot eyes on deck, you know, that's going to be like one of the stronger feature areas. Back air, is that it? Yes, we're going to game five. Razo hanging on for his dear life. I mean, Razo got super lucky with that early game on the first stock, so you know what? It's going to be interesting to see how he's going to be able to adapt for game five, because T definitely turned it up and almost closed out any chance of Razo winning that set. And now we're going to game five. This is really tight for both players. Honestly, I am just, it excites me to no end to see SoCal players doing so well against Japan's finest. You know, we saw Nitro BT early in Braca. We saw Razo beat Raito. And we might see Razo beat T if he keeps on playing well. But it all comes down to this final game. You know, it gets a little combo off of that. Try reading the air dodge or the, the jump in, but you know I'm not gonna be able to find it. T gets comboed by the grab, but you know what? It, it kind of just able to break out of it. All right, that Peach Bomber will get punished by T. Floating out of the way of that forward smash. All right. And just when you think the key is out of the way, you have the hydrant right afterwards following up. So T able to really, you know, put Razo in a bad position. Pretty even so far, 40% differential. Oh, that Beach Bomber, the second time he got punished for doing that. Might just be getting a little antsy. Might just really want T to go off stage. Oh, oh. my god, and yet again, good knowledge on him knowing that the bell would send him out in the opposite direction. Combo it into another back air, and that will be it for that first stock. And you know, he takes the first blood of this game. Oh, he has a bomb, and he just throws it away. That could have been the ticket to you know, evening up the stocks, but instead, once again, we just see T running away with it. Oh, you know, I know Rob wanted to jump over the, the grab in order to fair him, but you know what, that fair kind of comes in at 45 degree angle, so he may or may not have gone grab if he didn't like pull back a little bit. Right, the fire hydrant away, and another peach bomber. You really should be careful when using that special move, Razo. Oh. Yet again, oh, T kind of taking away this game five with a vengeance. 
He's like, I should have won that game four, but you know what? And it, it's not going to be enough. I'm going to try to finish this off with a three stock if possible. That umbrella saving Razo's second stock, but the question is for how long? Not very long because that back throw will kill Razo. I think he's losing it. He's not. Not confident that he can win anymore. I think. You know, I mean, I feel like it's not Razo being confident. It's just T has just been turning it up this game five, realizing that like, okay, I've been playing a little bit too passively, but now I'm feeling myself. I know what you're gonna do. I'm in your mind. I'm in your soul, and I know what you're going to do next. So I'm going to take this game and punch myself a ticket into grand finals. Oh, and just like that, you read the defensive option right there, and you know what? all these options coming out from T and. I like how he upbeat right there, because he knew that he was in the middle of the combo, and that would have helped him escape it. Yes, that was his only way of escaping the combo, pretty much. All right. Razo can't afford to take any more hits. Oh my goodness, I... I feel like he's feeling himself a little bit too much now, kind of just throwing out these up smashes, these four smashes. But you know what? When you have a full stock lead like that, like, if you get the read and it kills, like, it's not a bad read. Okay, and another Peak Bomber. Every time he's gone for Peak Bomber, it has been punished. And that back air, that will knock out Southern California's last contender. We're having the Japan Grand Finals. Wow.